Are you looking to buy a business and come to the United States with a visa? There's E2 visas, so there's a variety of other visas. And I always recommend that people go get lawyered up. Go see a good, reputable immigration attorney with a lot of experience. and They can guide you along in the process of getting that visa. I am here to show you how you can specify and identify really great businesses that are going to fit your interest. So I put this as buy a restaurant because about 30% of the people come to us would like to buy a restaurant, a bar, some sort of sports club or something like that that fits the um, uh, the food industry. Uh, but other people, and I put this or any business because you could change the category and you'll see as I go through this real, real quick video how to go about it. This is Brian Stevens and I'm with a company called Legacy Venture Group. This is our buybizfl.com uh, video and so B-U-Y-B-I-Z-F-L, that's buy, biz, and FL. This will show you businesses and uh, that sort of thing in the state of Florida and how to sort through and get rid of all the garbage that you'll see on some of the major chains that are just trying to collect uh, money from everybody, but you can't tell whether they're good or bad or indifferent. This will narrow it down. You still need to always do thorough due diligence in the process. So uh, remember, it was buybizfl.com, B-U-Y-B-I-Z-F-L.com. Um, with Legacy Venture Group, and you might have seen that in the background. And that will take you to a page that looks something like this. I'm going to tighten it up for the sake of the uh, video screen. Uh, but you can see on here the category. I'm in Tampa Bay, Florida. So a couple of the counties that are in Tampa Bay uh, are as follows. Hillsboro, and by the way, you can, you can click on Shift, and when you click down below uh, a listing and another one, you can highlight a whole bunch. Or I can go back to here and click on it and unclick on it. Or you can click on the command key or the equivalent on your computer, play around with it a little bit, and click multiple ones that you want to get rid of. If you don't want one you've highlighted, highlight it again, and it'll disappear. So I'm going to pick some counties that are around uh, the greater greater Tampa Bay area. Um and um, so I'm going to pick the, all the Pasco, the Pinellas, the Polk. I'm going to go down to Sarasota. It's kind of a fun area down there. And I'm going to also click on the um, Manatee area. And I'm going to pick those counties. Now, I said restaurants, right? So you might think for yourself, well, there's a couple different categories in this system. I'm going to show you the details of restaurants. And um, you can click down here until you find the word restaurant okay and remember you can hit the command and then click on other things if you wanted them i'm also going to go up and pick out liquor related businesses you may or may not want to be involved in that sort of thing but it might be a lot of fun especially here you'll find some of the sports bars now if you look over here at this section it's going to say display categories and subcategories so i've already hit liquor and restaurant and i'm going to click on this and it should take me up to just liquor-related businesses and restaurants. Okay, so I might want to just say I'm looking for sports clubs. And for some reason, sports bars are up with the liquor-related. If you want a microbrewery or you want a winery, if we have them, it's going to be in these categories. You can choose those. Now, when it comes to restaurants, if I left this alone, it would include all the different restaurants, including sandwich shops and cafeterias, etc. But if you were specific and you said, well, I want uh, Italian and Mexican and that sort of thing, you can click these little boxes. Again, if you want to change it, you go back. Um, I'm going to go back and click all restaurants here, and I'm doing just the sports bar there. And now I'm going to hit this thing called Submit Selection. It's up at the top here, too, Submit Selections. I can hit Reset or Return without making selections. I'm hitting Submit Selections. Okay, now let's say I've got a budget. For sure, we all have budgets, right? So I want to find something that's going to uh, give me a couple criteria. I want something that's going to sell for at least... $100,000 because I'm thinking in my mind that I want to have something that's good and maybe the attorney is telling you you need a business that's a certain amount. Well, read the law very carefully. You're going to find there's terms like substantial, but there's no dollar amount, at least the last time I looked on the uh, immigration uh, website. 
but there are some criteria that the attorneys are more comfortable with in, and I'd highly recommend that if you're going to hire one, and that you do hire one, that you listen to their criteria and guide through. If you see something you really, really love, and it's like $10,000 less than they're recommending, and you're passionate about it, there might be a case for arguing against that, but meanwhile, otherwise, then just stick with uh, going through their guidelines. Now, let's say I, I, I have a top-end budget of um, maybe... Uh, 300,000. So you have these preset categories, um, but I'm going to type in here to the side 325,000 because I'm thinking that most people will price their businesses and maybe they're going to price them a little higher. I can put down 300,000, but I'm going to put it 325, realizing that I might be able to negotiate it. You can put 350 or whatever you want to do. Keep in mind that you're probably going to negotiate down the price a little bit when you can. And that's uh, the market is getting pretty hot for buying businesses right now, but there's still usually room. Now, you might also say, well, what about household income? We need to make at least, and you should know your numbers. Let's say I got to at least make 75. I'd like to make a lot more, but if I get to 75,000, I know I can sort of keep the lights on and take care of the kids and and uh, and keep my car in the driveway and full of gas. And so that's the minimum I'm going to look at. Or you could put in a specific criteria again, or you could check out the pre-selected categories. If you definitely wanted to have something like you wanted an Italian restaurant, you could type in Italian restaurant in, in here and it'll pick up categories. But now we're going to get to some of the more interesting parts of this. We're going to go to the advanced search. This is that red section right here, advanced search. And now we've opened up some other categories. The gross sales, let's say you want to make sure you're doing one, one that's making at least... Um, a half million dollars. And you're doing that because you've done some research maybe and you know that it's hard to find a lot of restaurants that are making more than anywhere, uh, more than 20%. There's a rare case where it could be more, but you've done your research and you said that, you know you want at least 100,000. So you don't want one of the ones where the guy's saying, hey, I'm grossing 200 and I'm keeping 115 in my pocket because that seldom, seldom, seldom ever happens and you don't need the headache of going through a lot of nonsense. Um, uh, so gross sales, um, and I put that into the maximum, and I don't mean to, so I can switch it back out, and I'm going to put the minimum gross revenues are, are that. So the adjusted net, and you're going to see terms for things like adjusted net, discretionary earnings, seller's discretionary earnings, owner benefit, etc. One number is supposed to be talking about how much a working manager owner of a business can take home if they run the business properly, effectively, efficiently, like the past owner is doing, but just one working owner. So if the seller has got the spouse and three of the kids and they're talking about the household income, you've got to go back and change that income to say, well, let me replace the spouse with market wages, whatever that might be, and the kids with market wages. And now removing that from the cash flow, how much do I have less? That's the number we should be talking more about, but not all sellers are on the same page and that's why I'm specifying it. Get with a good broker or a good intermediary. Go to businessbrokersofflorida.com or reach out to our company or just go to somebody who really knows your stuff and get some extra guidance early, early on. It's not overly complicated, but it is a little bit complex in terms of understanding the terminologies, especially when you're uh, from another country and you might be turning talking about turnover and they're talking about gross revenues or what have you, etc. Okay? So get to know the terminology. Make sure you understand it eye for eye. Um, now, you could have put those key words in here, uh, listing or office number. If you like this, some sort of broker, you could type in a code number. But here's some other interesting stuff. Now, you can put in how many days the business has been on the market. On average, the average business goes for about nine months, meaning that some businesses sell for longer than that, maybe a year, year and a half, they could be on the market, maybe even two years. I just talked to a guy who sold a phenomenal business for $10 million, and it was on the market for four years. It was a great business. He did a good job. It was finding the right time, the right market, the right economy, and the right everything all together. But so if you try to play the game and try to guess, well, I want the good ones. And so I don't want to see anything that's under uh, 30 days or something like that. Realize that there's a lot of great businesses that uh, stay on the market for a while. Now, businesses can go very fast sometimes, but don't get bullied by some broker to say, hey, you better buy it now because it's going to be gone tomorrow. Everybody plays that. Not everybody. A lot of people play that game. Use your common sense. Don't get pushed into something you don't want to do. On the other hand, if you do see something you like, and we can go into another video, you can get in and make an offer so that you're protecting yourself so you can make sure you have time to do 
due diligence, make sure you get a lease, make sure you get a visa or what have you. That's really important. So I want you to, you know, uh, act quickly, but not extremely uh, crazy so that you're making uh, a foolish decision. Don't get talked into a lot of pressure on that. Look at this category down here. Show only businesses that a little box in front of may qualify for a visa. Hey, so if you're listening to this because you're thinking about an E2 visa or similar, check that box. That's helpful. Now realize that just because people check that box doesn't mean that they've had a chance to go to the embassy. It means that the broker or the listing agent has looked it over and known a little bit about the criteria or a lot about the criteria and said, yeah, this seems to make it make a lot of good sense. Okay. Um, the other category is this tax returns and P&Ls. Okay. These are the categories where people are saying I can back up my numbers with my taxes and, and profit loss statements. You know, there's all these other categories. You look at annualized, meaning hey, they, they, got through January and then guessed how well the year is going to be doing, or they got to prove it, wink, wink, you can work in the business for 60 days and see how much money we're making, we're making so much. Uh, people are doing a lot of different things, kind of old world and new world or whatever you want to call it, but when you get in a visa, you probably ought to be uh, doing your due diligence, of course, but have things that are backed up with pay paperwork. Uh, again, the shift key or the command key will allow you to highlight both tax return and uh, profit loss statement. And then you look through all the other choices. You feel pretty good about it. And remember, we were looking at restaurants, but you could have picked any category. You could have picked uh, dental salons or, or uh, massage therapy parlors or, 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 or hair salons or what have you, a landscaping company. We're doing restaurants. So let's just take a look at restaurants in the greater, greater Tampa Bay area. And now you're going to get this criteria. And there's not a whole lot on here. There's only five. And we got to make sure that none of these say under contract. I don't see under contract on any of these right now. So now you can look at the details. Here's American Restaurant, price at 279 down payment. They're doing a little bit of seller financing to 49. Uh, they're saying that they're making uh, $159,986. And you can read a little criteria about the business. You also see this little bar says, click here for more details. And when you click on that, it'll open it up and it'll summarize the things that we've been talking about. And it'll even tell you some other things that are important. Look down here, accounts receivable. Most restaurants don't have money coming from ever make the sale, usually people eat, pay, leave, right? But occasionally businesses have a thing where they uh, provide these goods and services and then they allow 30, 60, 90 days payments. Definitely uh, a rarity if it's in the restaurant business, but look at that. Look at the inventory. So they've checked over here, yes, meaning this business, especially if you're gonna pay their full price, is coming with uh, this amount of inventory in the business. And if there's more inventory than that, you're going to check for the difference. If it's, if it's less inventory than that, if it's only 10000 and they're offering 16000 then they're going to owe you or they're going to remove from the price at the closing table $6,000 different. You need to write up the contract, and that's a whole other video we're going to do out there. Another couple of things is FF&E, which stands for the furniture, the fixtures, and the equipment. These are usually things that are easily removed from the premises. You're carried out the door, like the equipment, like the chairs and the tables and the, and the slicer, or maybe a little quick disconnect, you know, screw off the, uh, unplug the stove or, 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 uh, or something like that and carry it out and out. The other category is called leasehold. Those are the fixtures that are designed, built into the business itself, the you know, flooring and, and carpeting and, and the things that make the place good, but things that you can't easily take out. Uh, they also come with that, you know, although you got to keep in mind that if you move this business down the road, you get to take the FF&E, the stuff that you can walk out the door with. You probably take inventory, whatever that was at the time, but you wouldn't undo all the planks and the carpeting and the lighting and all that sort of stuff that's tied into it. Okay, nonetheless, they want you to see, hey, this is a really Valuable business. We believe that there's, you know, uh, and categories over here, $396,000 worth of stuff in this business, and you couldn't build it out brand new for that for sure. And they're only asking for $279. This might be a really good fit for you and your business. Okay. So if you get to the point you love it, you click on that, and you can type in your information. If you got a company name, that's fine. Uh, contact it's you, you know, uh, Brian Stevens, your address, your uh, cell phone, your, your email country uh, that you're from, uh, email address, a message, hey, this is a really good business, please send it to me, I'm looking for a visa, I'll be in town in two weeks, blah, 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 whatever message you want to communicate, and then you can put in this code, and this is done because there's a lot of people hacking the internet, and we, we're trying to minimize that so our stuff stays secure, so you just type in that number, and then you hit send, 
and you've got yourself a message coming to you. Anyway, that's all I've got for you right now. Remember, this was just about restaurants. And there were a lot to choose from. You could go through and keep clicking. You can go back, hit the backslash or however your computer chooses to do it, and look at the other restaurants and say, hey, maybe this pizza shop looks good, specialty. Sometimes you come up with lists that have hundreds and hundreds, and sometimes you have just a half dozen or less like we did here, but it helps you get on target for the things you're looking. Take care and make great things happen. This is Brian Stevens with Legacy Venture Group. Our main website is buybizusa.com, but you can also find us at buy biz fl and find our listings all right thank you very much take care